Hello everyone and welcome back. Today, before we start the video, I want to say we have a dumb phone giveaway happening right now until January 30th. I will contact the winners via email or whatever you give me here to contact you and you can win one out of nine phones. So make sure to enter, tell your friends, and I hope that this helps you in your digital minimalism journey. You can say stuff and you can give me a way to contact you and you can select one of the phones uh, to win. Hopefully you win and if not, uh, this will happen throughout the year and with all of the devices that I review. Thank you for watching this video. Let's get to the Hisense A9. Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm really excited that you're here and today I have an update on my usage on the Hisense A9. This device has been my work phone for the past uh, month and a half and I am really happy to report that the device does not disappoint. Um, like I said before, I really think e-ink screens are the best way in order to, you know, I'm going to put the brightness a little bit up here to reduce distraction and they really are slower and they definitely slow you down in your consumption. So I have the Hisense A9 here and as you see, it's different than last time because I have customized it with Niagara Launcher. Niagara Launcher is a special launcher that lists everything alphabetically. And as you see, the animations are not really that bad, but of course it's a little bit slower because of the e-ink screen. And it's very clean, very nice to use. And I'll be showcasing some of the features that I use the most. Um, and essentially it's, you know, most of the apps right here, messages, antenna pod, maps, Libby, phone, transit, lead chess, open camera, and fantasy. And essentially I haven't had any issues with these. Uh, now a caveat is of course that this device does not support a lot of bands in the United States and you're not going to be uh, using it very well. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to go to is for Libby, you know, and kind of showcase what the e-reader experience is. Of course you can listen to anything uh, on this and you can also use it on Kindle if you, that's what you like. Okay, I don't know. Oh, there it is. And essentially, I'm going to showcase what the reading experience is because, of course, e-ink phones have a e-reader kind of like it's the main uh, purpose to a certain degree uh, of, of the device. Uh, and as you see right there, also by Adam Grant, you know, um, this is the book Hidden Potential, a lot of empty pages, but... Um, yeah, if you wanted to read something, there is not that big of a deal, you know, with the screen and, you know, difference with the LCDs when it comes to the like speed, but when it comes to readability, it's actually better because it's on an e-ink device. So I personally think that number one, I think this book is great and you should read it. Um, but the reading experience is really nice and, you know, it transitions is very well, very easy. Uh, without many issues and I personally enjoyed using it like that. I personally use the Libby app and you can get also um, other things through Libby like audiobooks so you can listen to the device without issues as well. As you see right there, this is the reading experience. Very easy, very nice. I personally really enjoy it. And there are better apps like Core Reader um, and Kindle and I think they perform very well as well. So the panel is very legible and it looks good uh, in pretty much all conditions. So now let's talk about messages. Um, when it comes to messages, uh, it does, you know, you don't have any issues sending or receiving um, if you're on RCS. So RCS, the protocol did not have any issues, but sometimes I miss text messages from a couple people and notably it was with Verizon. So it wasn't with any other carrier, but Verizon phone numbers for some reason were not sending it uh, very well and also those were iPhones so it had to be kind of like iPhone and Verizon I had two numbers that were not performing really great antenna pod did not have any issues I was able to actually get good um, you know on my podcast and you know it, it works really well as you see is very nice transitioning uh, but still very boring because you don't have a lot of the colors to guide you through everything uh, the Lee chess app so if you want to play a game of chess uh, not a problem, uh, not uh, the most uh, nice when it comes to refreshing. You'll see a lot of ghosting in this, um, but essentially after that, uh, you know, I personally did not have any issues. I, I was able to play. As you see, there are some artifacts here and there that populate throughout the screen, uh, but that's because it's a heavy animation game. You know, it's not specifically made for e-ink. 
Um, then you have uh, open camera, no problems with the camera. I sh already showcased some samples. I'll, so I'll showcase another sample here from the um, from the Hisense A9. Uh, low quality uh, pictures were not an issue, but low light, it you know definitely reduced the quality. The sensor is not the most amazing, uh, but again, I, I did not have many issues. So I personally like the pictures that it produces, and it produces them in full color, so you can see them you know somewhere else. It's kind of wonky to um, essentially have the camera and like point at something, right? Like you see it and your eyes see the color, but this is purely black and white. And you're like, is it going to come out good? Uh, you don't really know. Uh, here, let me show you uh, something like, so right here, I was taking a picture of a phone and uh, as you see right there, you know, like I really don't know how it's going to come out, uh, but it came out really fine. And I, I did not have, again, many issues with this. Um, I, I actually liked the quality for what it can do. Um, last but not least, you do have Google Maps, and Google Maps worked perfectly. I did not have issues at all. Uh, it pinpoints your location, it follows you, it tracks you, and I drove all around in the Denver area without many issues. Now, I do want to mention that uh, after a month of testing, the more you stay in the dense parts of town, if you're here in Colorado and Denver, uh, then you're going to get 4G without issues. The more you go into the kind of like rural or more like less uh, populated areas, you're going to get 2G if it's still available. Um, I have gotten reports that, for example, in LA, there are not many issues unless you get into what is called the Inland Empire. Um, here, it's a, a little bit less than if you get to like the actual populated areas around the coast. So again, it just really varies by your location and, you know, you kind of have to work out whether um, something is important or not to you, uh, the signal and how it works with your area. Uh, Wi-Fi calling worked really great and I did not have any issues um, uh, working that out. Uh, Uber worked as well. I tested that. WhatsApp works uh, without issues. Zoom works. <laughs> it's a little bit of quite an experience to use Zoom. Uh, but yeah, I, I personally I really enjoyed uh, using these uh, apps, you know, and as you see, I have loaded other apps, but with Niagara Launcher and other customizations that I have done, essentially when I try to open them, it blocks me because I have certain schedules. Uh, with like Unplug and other things like that. Uh, One Sec is another app that I've been testing that allows you to kind of like restrict your usage. So even though it's a smartphone with the boring screen and you know a lot of the nice features, I definitely think this phone can help you in your digital journey and uh, allow you to have you know no problems and good communication. And of course, if you're international, this is even better because you're going to have better coverage and more reliable service. But if you're here in the United States, make sure that it works in your area. And of course, you know, always ask questions. If you have anything for me, make sure to put it in the comments below and I'll interact with you guys. Thank you for um, continuing with the follow up. And I, I always follow up with devices that are worthy to follow up. Uh, so this device will continue to get a follow up. Um, battery has been really good. Um, you know, four or five days without many issues. And when I'm really using it, two to three days. So again, a very good device that I've been enjoying. Hope this helped you and gave you a little bit of an update. And again, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below. See you later and continue to have a great 2024.